Introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dodd and Freddy Prince Jr. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Wrestling with Freddy, now known as Wrestling with Friends. And with me, as always, is my amazing co-host, Mr. Jeff Dye. How are you today, sir? I'm feeling good, Freddy. I'm happy to be back in the pocket talking wrestling with uh, with you, buddy. That's right. Today's episode is going to be all about the huge, epic pay-per-view weekend of wrestling, both Saturday and Sunday. How are you feeling about all that, Jeffrey? I'm good. Do you have a good British accent you can give us? a Because it's the Clash of the Castle. It's the first time they've been in the UK for f- uh, 700 years. Last time they did it, uh, Davy Boy Smith hoisted up the championship. But it was like, yeah, he was, you know, he's the British Bulldog. You got to let him win there. It's the British Bulldog. Well, I think this time, though, because it's Drew, we have to do a Scottish accent. You know what they're- I mean? So Great, great Britain, and they're really billing it as England, yeah. but they should say Great Britain, and he has the Scottish the brogue accent that's so sexy and manly all at that's the same That's great, Freddie. Look at that. Well, and also that they're really turning this into like they're like, I know it's England or the I'm sorry, I know it's the UK, but let's just do let's just do all of them. You know, we got a uh, Seamus. You know, we got a. Uh, we'll get in. We'll get into all that. We're gonna get into both the pay per views, but a couple of things happened during the week uh, that we should mention, and one is. The return of Johnny Gargano back in WWE, debuting on Monday Night Raw. A crazy CM Punk Moxley championship match to get rid of the interim title. And uh, like you said, the first show in England in over 30 years at Clash at the Castle. And finally, AEW All Out is sold out. You mentioned it during the Open. They're bringing all the Europeans over. Sheamus, Gunther. Okay, so the buildup to this is what it is, okay? However, they did a segment to kind of get you excited for this that started off and it was not it was not going well, man. Sheamus was trying to get the crowd behind him, started talking about all the men that he's defeated that are at a higher level than Gunther. And he starts saying, I've had banger after banger after banger. For those who don't understand the accent, he's saying a banger match. And then he stopped to let the crowd say banger and no one said anything. And then he goes, <laughs> he, but he, he played with it. He goes, oh, t- someone said it. Someone said it. So the segment's dying and I'm feeling so horrible for Seamus because I know Seamus. I love Seamus. I think he's awesome. And I hate seeing people I care, you know, die. It's like watching a comic that you love and respect die on stage. You know, it just hurts. The segment is saved. Because Gunther has this dude, they call him, what, Kaiser? He's jacked and he looks great. And him and Butch and the other big Irish guy all just start fighting. But Gunther and Sheamus never break. They just stare at each other face to face with all this chaos going around. (laughs) It was like watching an old school WCW Monday Nitro. It was, it saved the segment. I'm not going to go out there and say it was amazing. But it saved the segment because neither dude moved for a full minute while there's just nonstop (laughs) chaos. And it was the only thing that I think would get me excited to see them fight because you're waiting for them to fight. And I thought it was slick and it was a good save. So I just wanted to shout that out. Let's get into Clash at the Castle. Jeff, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I'm crazy hyped for this. The Friday Night Smackdown with all the vignettes that they shot and Drew talking about his life story and coming forward. And we're going to get into my love affair with Sami Zayn. But are you excited for this match? Yes, this is a great build. I actually I actually really enjoy this. And I'm going to go on a limb here. I I think I think this is the end of the Roman. Not forever, but I mean, I think this is the end of the the championship. I think I think Drew wins. Yeah, I think he's going to win, too. It would be such a brutal story for him to lose in in his home in in his motherland when I've come out here and I've gone through all this and then to just what no that would be horrible that would be such a <laughs> that's not the a fairy tale ending in any way shape or form but you could see Austin theory or Bray Wyatt and here's the thing I want to preface this. You're not seeing Bray Wyatt. No way. Yeah, I think Bray Wyatt comes out. I think that's what's going to happen. And also, I want to preface this. I don't read the sheets. I don't know any of these things. That's why a lot of my predictions are going to fall very, very flat. But I do talk to friends that love wrestling who 
claim they don't read the sheets, but I've got a feeling that they do. So, it, you know, They're keep that in mind. Also, They're deep in those sheets. I also think we might see Paige because, you know, even if it just comes out for like a big spot to make it uh, to make uh, everyone pop. But or maybe, you know, maybe she comes back. I think the more likely scenario would be Theory or Karrion Cross. Because Cross has been heavily featured in vignettes backstage, and he's always talking Drew's name. Now, that could be saving him for when Drew wins, and maybe Cross just comes out. Maybe Cross helps Drew go over, Mm -hmm. and then they have a moment in the ring, although I think you'd want to keep that moment just for Drew at the end because he got so screwed with that pandemic championship. I think you want to give him that real moment in front of, all of the people cheering for him instead of all the video screens that were right. cheering for him. <laughs> and he deserves that. You know what I mean? So I could see that or I could see theory coming out. And if the new regime isn't a fan of Vince's guy theory, he could cash in and carry and cross could destroy his opportunity. And even though it was a match, make him lose. And then theory is out of that picture. And then you go to the races with Cross and and Drew McIntyre. That's my conspiracy theory. And then Bray Wyatt comes out and beats shit. up everybody. You know, Bray is not coming <laughs> out, man. Bray, everybody is every pay per view, man. They're like, this is the one. And Here I'm the guy that Bray does it. Wyatt. Yeah, ever since he's like literally <laughs> every week, does. I go. Yeah, I love You're, Bray. There's no shame in that, bro. Everybody, because everybody wants it. Everybody likes Bray. He was the last attraction left in wrestling. He was actually an attraction, like the undertaker, yeah. like, you know what I mean? There was something magic about him. So we miss him, but it, every pay-per-view I hear everyone, this is the one yeah. look, there was a hint of him. Like, no, that was edge. This it's is the one. It's, what, it's, it's cause good. it's what we want. It's not what we think. You know, we're very, uh, we run with our hearts. I actually, we should say that since this is the first episode this season where we're making like predictions here. Are you making the predictions based on what you think will happen or what you want to happen? Two different I will pre- I will preface each prediction because it's going to be different for each okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I want Bray to come out. We're, we'll talk more about Bray this episode, who's not even wrestling professionally, than we will any other wrestler. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. We're moving down the line. This story is the one that I thought was weird. The SmackDown Women's Championship, Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler. And I'm going to start by saying I love Shayna Baszler. I think she's great. I think she's super cool. She's completely unique on the roster, the way she wrestles, the way she behaves, the way she looks. I don't think she's been booked great, but I love Shayna Baszler. The Liv Morgan story, I love Liv too. I've seen her do great stuff, but this story is so weird to me i it's i don't understand having her look weak going into the pay-per-view if she's the baby face because even if she overcomes it there's still all this like history if she tapped out before Mm -hmm. she got the victory and then they've played her soft and it's not her fault it's not like she can go in there and be like yeah i'm not doing that you know what i mean so it's it's a tricky situation but i'm not that hyped for this i'm assuming Liv morgan's going to win because i don't think they would give shana the belt yet because she hasn't been booked properly to this point but i i don't i don't know how much i care about the match what about what say you i say that the wrestlers have to do what daddy says right when vince was there like like, let's say you think well i need a big push they don't care if vince says you lose you lose and I imagine the same is true now that Vince is gone. If the wrestling, if the writers, are, you do what the writers make happen, right? Dude, look how Karrion Cross was booked when he first yes. came up and as the, the sexy porno gladiator. Like, do you right. think he wanted to do that? No. no. So here's what I think happens. Either A, they're making Liv Morgan look real weak so she can lose to Shayna Baszler and then Shayna fights Ronda and they build that story I, to Ronda. Bro, I would love that. I think the other way you were going to go just to make it believable, if if Liv does win, is they just kind of white out that first story and then just say, hey, here's where it starts. It's she beat Shayna, she beat her legit, and now she's our legit champion. But uh, the way you just did it, I like even more because Shayna and Ronda would be pretty cool. And also, it's not like Ronda deserves to get the belt just because she comes back. You know what I'm saying? It's not like she's putting in a lot of like TV time or work. 
So you could make you could make an argument that Shayna and Ronda both haven't having enough time in there to really bit to get the strap right away. I just did an episode of WWE Rivals and JBL, who's there in every episode, was talking to me about Hunter's work ethic and how even when he got injured, he always finished a match. He believed in working every day. And I feel like the part timers aren't gonna get as much love with Hunter in charge as the full timers because of how he came up. So I, and Rhonda's not a full timer. So right. it would be cool if they tried to make Shayna off of Rhonda Rousey. I would dig that, man. Shayna, Shayna's badass, man. She just looks mean and like she should be in a blade movie. Like she's just cool, right. man. I like her. Shayna. Um, also, it's also, that's another thing like in, in men's, we've learned that every person can win at any time and every wrestler is whatever. Like you have a Rey Mysterio versus Undertaker and you still think there's a chance. But when it comes to the girls, you see Shayna Baszler against like a Liv Morgan. You go, oh, that's not going to go good. Like, you, yes. there's like and, and you should feel like that. And they haven't yeah. even booked her well and you feel like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, speaking of women I like, and I'm surprised that I'm excited to see this. Because it's a six-person tag. We got the oh, yeah. six-woman tag match. Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka versus Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky. I have not been excited to watch a six-man or six-woman tag match at a pay-per-view in probably 15 years. I don't even remember the last Survivor Series team match I was that excited for. But... Bailey has been so good on the mic. They fumbled a little at the end of that Canada trip, but I'm racking that up to everyone being exhausted on that Monday Night Raw. But Bailey has been so cool. And the way they put Ka- Dakota Kai and EO Sky with her on either side, she is so much taller and broader and thicker than both those girls. She looks way legit, man. And I'm loving they're building her and Bianca eventually. I'm excited to see where they go. Bliss and Oscar are doing what they do. I'm never excited to watch these matches. And I think because of Bailey and Bianca's done all right. Like, again, that last one in the blow off to the pay-per-view, I think everyone was exhausted and no one could remember what to do. But... I'm excited for both of them. And if it leads to, of course, it's leading to Bianca and and Bailey. That's not a prediction. Anyone would know that. I think they've done it well, and I'm excited for it. This one I feel like would be a challenge for you to get hyped for. Am I right or am I wrong? I uh, I don't know if you're right, but my prediction is they definitely win. For 100% Bailey's team and control are winning. From here, they'll build a Bianca Belair Bailey story to the next pay per view. And I think Bailey goes over there too. We talked about the Intercontinental Championship for Gunther and, and Sheamus. I think we both probably agree that Gunther's going to win. Have Riddle and Seth freaking Rollins found a way to get you excited about this rivalry yet? I'm not crazy about either of the guys necessarily, but I, I think they've done good. Who do you have winning? This is hard, man. I don't know how you can get both guys over in this match. But it's tricky because Rollins did so much work for Cody to lose three times in a row and his character gets ridiculed and ridiculed. He got that last win. I don't know if you can let him lose. And if Riddle loses, I don't know what Riddle's story is from there, unless it's Randy's coming back to rehabilitate him and, and show him the way again. And they kind of start that story over, but I would not let, Seth freaking Rollins lose because I would put him on a path with the top, top, top of the roster. So I would, I have Seth freaking Rollins, although I wish they just call him Seth Rollins. I have him going over. I would bet all my money that Seth Rollins win. You just can't let him lose here. I just, I, yeah. I don't, I don't see any universe where they make it. You could find a way to end it in a way where you can make arguments that it wasn't, it wasn't clean or whatever the way you want to do it, but Seth wins. All right, let's move from WWE to AEW. And a sold out, all out, this is the Sunday pay-per-view. And it starts kind of bittersweet because Thunder Rosa had to relinquish the Women's World Championship for a back injury, I believe is what it was. All these damn back injuries. And they're going to have a fatal four-way with Tony Storm 
versus Dr. Britt Baker versus Jamie Hayter, who I saw at the LA show and really liked, and Hikaru Shida, who's always game and in there. Tony Storm is the is the former now tag team partner of Thunder Rosa. They used to have Thunderstorm, which was such a great tag team name. It was so old school in the 80s, man. I loved it. She's going to be the baby face favorite. Dr. Britt Baker is going to be the heel favorite. And I think you and I both believe she's going to win. Jamie Hayter, I think, is the dark horse to win it. They could surprise everybody because it's an interim championship. It's not the real one. And I don't think Hikaru Shida has a chance to wear that belt yet just because I think she took some time off and isn't really in a story. It's tricky to book these types of matches when a champion gets hurt. But it's also exciting because you see people step up when they when they get a real opportunity. I say Dr. Britt Baker is winning this. It was a mistake to ever take the belt off her. She should have had a Roman Reigns type run. For real, man, I love her. I love her to death. That's who I think is winning this match. What about you, brother? I think this is going to be a great match. I'm excited about it. Britt Baker or, or Britt Baker DDS. That's what they should start calling her. You know, I love it. Give a shout back. Give a, give a shout out. Shout out to. Kane before he was Kane, Isaac Yankum. <laughs> uh, but no, I think that this is going to be a good match. And then I think Bray Wyatt comes out and, and returns. <laughs> That's what I believe to be I hate you so much. true. I don't know what it is with Britt Baker. They like they they put they bet the whole farm on this gal. They let she was the only thing holding the division together for <laughs> a mean, while before amazing. Jade Cargill came around. So I think they have to put it on her again. Build the division yep. around her, figure out a way to book Ruby into this into story and things like that, because Ruby can work too. I feel like they could build her against CM Punk and they'd let her win. The other women's championship, the TBS championship. Yes. Is represented by the undefeated champion, Miss Jade Cargill, versus my dear friend from Up Up Down Down, who I played DD with, Athena. Now, this their story has had crazy hiccups. It's hit pause and play too many times to be consistent. And an, most recently turned into like a bullying thing where they were breaking some of her stuff. And that felt very like lay cool when Michelle McCool and, and, uh, and Layla were doing that thing, which I was never into. It just seems more childish than anything. So I'm not loving the way this is booked, but I love both these ladies. I know one of them and I believe she was brought there to really sort of legitimize bringing someone who can crazy work and help make Jade, you know, even better than she is and keep her on that trajectory upward. There's no way they're letting my girl win this match. It's got to be the champ. It should be the champ, Jade Cargill. And she remains undefeated, which is a really, I, I still buy it. You know what I mean? Because I haven't seen the person yet that's going to come into that company that's going to take it from her. So I love this for Jade. I think it's great they brought Athena in, who we know as Ember Moon. And uh, yeah, shout out to Jade Cargill. Keep it green, girl. What do you think, bro? Also Jade Cargill. But I will admit, you know, I do like to pick uh, my wrestlers based on who looks better and looks cooler. And and if anybody wants to say, oh, that's sexist. He's talking about these girls like that. I do it to the guys, too. I was I've about been, to say it. You pick been, your guy favorites yeah. the same way. Uh, and maybe I'll just be honest here. Do you find it harder to predict AEW than WWE? Yeah, but I'm programmed WWE. So I think that's all I know. You know okay. what I mean? Like I don't I don't go outside that box very often cuz I have no training outside their company. Well, cuz like I, when I'm thinking of all the things I was going to predict with Alex sent us all this stuff and I go, "Oh, I got this, I got this, I got this." And then I got to the AEW uh roster and I was going, "Hmm, I don't I was I had to spend way more time on each match thinking, "I don't know what they're going to do." I I guess I I just find them to be more unpredictable maybe or I just don't know as much. But anyways, well, sorry. That I being think, said, I, I'm going with Jade. I think we're two. Yeah, I think we're two for two so far with Britt Baker and Jade Cargill. That'll take us to the AEW World Tag Team Championship, oh, yeah. which is the biggest dude ever, Keith Lee. Love and him. we got Swerve Strickland versus the Acclaimed. There's never going to be a time where I pick against 
Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland until they their team hates each other and they don't want to work with each other anymore. Or if they do like a last match in Nashville at age 73, then you might go, I don't know if they'll win. Per- kind of- perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> but Swer- Swerve is the is the one that got away as far as Triple H is concerned. That would be the the focal point of of the top dollar group over there right now because that's what it was in NXT and he was the one who could work better than everybody. And that's why that group still feels incomplete is because they lost that guy. Mm -hmm. Swerve can work and Keith Lee is borderline attraction. Like he's not Bray Wyatt because he hasn't found that character yet, that that right sort of road that's just perfect for him. Mm -hmm. But he's playing himself right now and he looks comfortable and that's way good enough for me. So they're going over. The acclaimed is going to lose as they should. And we are going to protect Swerve Strickland as we should. I don't see uh, I don't see them losing anytime soon at all to anybody. Build, 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 build. Love those guys. Okay, now we can talk trios championship. Uh, I was told we did a disservice when we forgot to mention the return of Kenny Omega. Um, I'll be honest. I was hoping the return would be solo. I didn't want it to be in a trio. But the trios championship has captivated my imagination because of Osprey and his team and the work that all these guys have been doing. So of course I would say the guy coming back, Kenny Omega's team would win, but he's more a solo guy. And I think Osprey has more a chance with the trios than solo. So why not let Osprey and his team get the win? And then you let Kenny Omega go and do the championship run that everybody's waiting for him to do. So that's how I think the the trios championship is going to go. But we're not going to spend too much time on the trios championship until we know how seriously they're taking. That this, is the company, not the wrestler. This is the first time I think I've said Kenny Omega's name on the podcast. I'm we're a few episodes in this season, so that is a that is a oversight a little bit. Um, yeah, I agree, Kenny Omega. I think that that's that's the you don't need to have him win, especially because. He's going to do bigger things than now. Here's where we're going to disagree. I predict. Okay. Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage. When MJF left AEW, storyline wise, the first promo that meant something after MJF's pipe bomb was Christian's promo against Jungle Boy and where he went into family stuff and things like this. This was all with permission, I'm sure. It was a great promo. And he maintained that story and that level of heat from the crowd pretty damn well. And then Jungle Boy returned. I'm not the up here singing praise on Jungle Boy every week. This is the first time I think I've mentioned his name on the show. I think he's handled this pretty damn well. Christian is obviously more refined on the microphone and better at promos and is is holding the majority of this. But when Jungle Boy got to let loose and say what he needed to say, I thought he did well with it. However, I think Christian Cage is going to win this match. And I think yeah. it's going to be through like that nefarious kind of father. Like, I did this. I did this out of love. I'm sorry. And he's going to get a moment of sympathy. And he's just going to like dead him in the nuts and finish him. And just, <laughs> give him. I honestly think the heel's going over in such a dirty, shady way in this match. And I think you're probably going to pick the good guy. Yeah, I, I'm going with the face on that. Now, and this one isn't something I want because I could care less about this match. If I'm if I'm real honest, fair enough. But fair uh, enough. but I think just what is going to happen is 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 going to be a big baby face moment. This goes to a story that's been a pe- a featured piece on our podcast the last two weeks, which is the American Dragon Brian Danielson versus the Lionheart, old school Chris Jericho, and the reason they have a fight, the reason they have a Uh, motivation to fight each other was a guy we mentioned named Daniel Garcia, who I wasn't sure about. And then my producer, our producer, Alex, got me hip to with some videos of some indie stuff that he did. And then he came out the next week without that weird leather hat backwards. I don't like the hat. (laughs) He came out and he looked like a real dude. And he struggled with the questions that were being posed to him because He was wrestling his hero, Brian Danielson, who his mentor no longer respects. Sports entertainer, Chris Jericho, mentor. 
wrestler, professional wrestler, Daniel Brian, or sorry, Brian Danielson. And this kid is torn and stuck in the middle. And the story has been Chris Jericho pushing him and saying, hey, man, you, you have to pick. You have to pick. Is it him or me? And he's like, and he had a real moment. He's like, you're asking me to pick between my hero and my mentor in front of all these people. That's too big a moment for me, man. I can't do it. It was such an honest answer. I'm excited to watch any Brian Danielson match. Chris Jericho still has the ability to put on a good match, and he's constantly trying to put people over. I have no idea who's going to win. So the only way I can see it, and I'm going to pick Jericho in this, is Jericho will win because Daniel Garcia will be out there at some point, and it's going to have to like cause some kind of, I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know if Daniel Garcia can go heel after this. I think he has to go babyface. But maybe I'm dead wrong, and they have a cool story that I haven't thought of. But I'm going to pick Lionheart in some nefarious business. I'm going with a lot of heels, bro. I don't know. You've been heel heavy on, on all I that. haven't picked. I've only picked Swerve as my only baby face. <laughs> I will never, ever in my life uh, predict anything against Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is the best. I love him so much. Like, literally, his wrestling, his, the show he made, the dark side of the ring, like, yeah, he, he's he basically he brought us AEW. If we're honest, like we wouldn't even ha- without Chris Jericho, this we don't even have this league of wrestling. I just I'm obsessed with Jericho. By the way, I'm doing his boat cruise, doing stand up comedy. That's March, right, you are. That's on the Jericho right. Boat cruise. I got to convince you to come out. I think Jericho wins this. I can, and it's because I don't really know. I I don't know how to predict it. I just I just don't see Jericho losing. I, even though he, I don't know. I just, I just, I'm never going to pay it against Jericho. Jericho wins. That's, that's my prediction. The next match I have no interest in. Wardlow should be doing solo stuff. He got made beautifully by MJF, and there's no reason for him to be in this story. Moving on. Mr. Ricky Starks, the jewel of New Orleans mm-hmm. versus Will Hobbs. This story is, was rushed, but there's only so many hours on TV. And I think these guys have done everything they can when in a very, very short window to make you care. I will say this. Ricky's promos have gotten a lot of proper reactions, but the energy from the crowd wasn't always there. And I think it's because this is a little bit rushed. That said, if these two can put on a good match and the finish isn't someone getting you know obliterated and sent to a hospital, then it could be a starting point for them. And you could try to stretch this out and get something out of two young guys that could both get each other over at the same time. Do you care about this match at all? Do you like either of these guys? And I like both of these guys. Gonna win? I, I think like Ricky it. Starks is going over, by the way. I like both of these guys. I, I like Will Hobbs. I just like because he's a big beast. You know, he's strong. He's got that rhino size, like that. He's wide and, and big. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I think Ricky, win, Ricky Starks wins, but I, I like both of these dudes a lot. And I hope to see them go, go back and forth. And like you just said, they can build each other. So just keep it going. And I like, you know, Will Hobbs has this like sneer that he does. Yeah, that, like, you remember that word? That sneer? Yeah. Nobody says that anymore, but it's like, if Billy Idol wasn't doing it to be sexy, he was <laughs> doing it to disrespect you. The main event, John Moxley, the champion, no more interim nonsense. I love that. Mm-hmm. He said, I hate this belt. I hate everything about it, which was great. <laughs> Versus. CM Punk, who has very slickly, if that's a word, made people question reality when dealing with stories he's involved with. He has always been very, very good at this. He is a master on the microphone. You do not have to write for this guy. They had a match, though, that lasted about three, maybe four minutes. Like you said earlier, it's harder to predict AEW, but Punk has to win, right? I am. I have no idea if I'm honest. <laughs> we Dude. said this on every one of these. <laughs> well, but, but no, not if, but definitely for this one. I don't yeah. under. It's so hard for me to understand what they want to do with these guys. Well, an injury screwed up the story, so I give them latitude when that happens. Punk has to win because I feel like there are more stories available to you with people chasing CM Punk as opposed to people chasing John Moxley. Because Moxley's reason for fighting is the same in every promo he's ever delivered. And that's not criticism. That's just fact. He says it. He goes, once that, once I'm in the ring with you, I don't care who you are. I'm there to fight you, to disrespect you, to make yeah. you bleed to hurt. Like, oh, so that's why he fights. 
I want Moxley to win, but I think Punk wins. That's my my prediction for what I believe is CM Punk and for what I want is John Moxley. But I don't see him losing in Chicago. Let me ask you this. Build. Because you've been you've been the one speculating returns. And I, yes. I don't know. Oh, Bray don't, Wyatt? Don't, don't, don't say Bray Wyatt. Don't. Oh, damn it. I wasn't going to say Bray Wyatt. <laughs> but what if CM Punk wins? You could steal the moment from CM Punk, not with Bray Wyatt, but with the return of MJF. I think that's very likely. You like that, don't you? I like it. And also, it makes total sense. I mean, because it's, it's, it's um, he wouldn't have to come out and fight. <laughs> you know, it's, it seems like he doesn't like getting in that ring much. It's, uh, we don't get to see a lot of MJF in the actual taking bumps lately, at least in a while. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. If MJF becomes the AEW champion, he will be the most insufferable heel the wrestling business has had in 30, 40 years. It's I, perfect. He is so... Per- Imagine if Rowdy Roddy Piper got the spot that Hulk Hogan had all those years and played it as the evil Rowdy Roddy Piper. That's what you get with a heel MJ. Because he's not... I mean, even if they're screaming babyface stuff at him, he buries the crowd. <laughs> even when they cheer for him. Yeah. He is so good at it. And I cannot wait for the reign of MJF. This is a huge weekend for wrestling, and it was a great week for wrestling. I can't wait. Saturday and Sunday. I will be watching wrestling at home in Los Angeles. With your boy, Freddie. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let's watch it together. All right, dude. We're going to watch professional wrestling together this week. And I'm so a stand-up comedian who's finally home for a week. I weekend. know. Well, it's a perfect coincidence. And it's a and, you know the clash at the castle in L.A. <laughs> So we're going to do our breakout matches. These are our predictions for who has a chance to steal the show. And I'm going to throw something out there at everybody. I'm going to actually flip it up and go Ricky Starks versus Will Hobbs. I feel they're going to know their story was rushed. I think even in his promos where he said things like, I only give 45 seconds to tell you how I feel about this. I think they know their time's going to be limited. And they're going to do everything they can to steal the show. So that's my prediction for breakout match of the weekend. Ricky Starks versus Will Hobbs. What say you, Jeff Dye? I got to go with the Jericho, Brian Dennis. I I think think there's a lot of question marks with what's going to happen there and that stuff. I think that's my breakout match. My honorable mention is Jungle Boy Christian Cage. And I'm going to make a crazy prediction that Christian Cage ends it with a nut shot that the referee does not see. And then he gets him with the finisher and puts him down. And if that happens, oh, 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 oh. when are we, when are we going to start calling that the China? You know, the low blow for the win when the ref's not looking. You, know, when, you can't fight with your balls once they're once they're attacked like that. They'll all. When I was win. a kid, I must have got hit in the nuts every single week. Sometimes two, three times a week. Now as a grown up, I haven't got hit in the nuts in a long time. Bro, I was riding home from the park one time. It was raining, and I had a, a Diamondback BMX bicycle. And I jumped off a curb and the pedals were wet and both feet slipped off the pedals. And I smashed my balls right on the crossbar, took a cider over onto the curb. And I'm telling you, it was 15 minutes of paralyzing pain and another good 10 minutes of just recovering from shame and humiliation (laughs) as every car that drove by was like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm okay, please leave me alone. A good 35 minutes of pain and shame before I mustered the energy to get up angry. I'm angry at the bike and then finally ride home. So ball shots for the win. That's the moral of today's show. Yeah. The China. The China. I China myself. That's yeah. Your bike China'd you. (laughs) That's right. Follow us on our official show accounts on Instagram, Wrestling with Freddy. That's one word, I E, not Y. Twitter, WW Freddy Pod. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. We'll see all of you next week on Wrestling with Freddy, aka Wrestling with Friends. Peace. We're out. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.